Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Barham Engines. Isaac's back. Yep, yeah, I'm back. He's back here. Everyone missed your last video, mate. They said it weren't the same without you. Where was I? I don't know. I think it's because it was about half six when oh, I did right. it. Oh, no, I was off with a bad back, yeah. which I've still got. And then did you come back in? Or? And then I come back in no. just to do a little video for him. It's nice go. of me, wasn't it? So, what we got here, mate, first of all. Two litre Ingenium. Two litre Ingenium, looking pretty much done. Yep, bottom end's all built, um, and that's all we're doing, so yeah. Nice. Just, uh, just gonna give the sump a lick of silver, and then, yeah. Very good. So, what was it, it we on. had to do on this? Any mods and? So you done the liners. Yep. The uh, top hat liners, and then, I've had to take about, well, 10 to 15 thou off of each piston, depending on which one it was. Okay, what, just to get the correct jut yeah, out? Yeah, to get about 20 thou protrusion. Is that so we skim the block? Yeah. Uh, the front cover we haven't skimmed, because we haven't got, we but you got can it. adjust the front cover. Yeah. You've got a bit of leeway there to sort of, but if there is too much jut out on that, they'll have to send us that, because they yeah. haven't. And we can skim that separately. So I've plaster gauged the mains and big ends and yeah. they're all good. All good, as mate. As they should be. Excellent. Um, so yeah. And this is going back up. to JR Vehicle. Yeah, JR Vehicle Services. Services, yeah. Um, and they've got another one for us to do after this, mate, apparently. Oh, I do. It's a thing they want to get into, the two litre Ingenium, so we could be seeing way more of them. Yep. Dug the old E36 M3 engine out, mate, out of the old plastic bag over nice. there. So when it was under the bonnet in the um, E30, when Tom had it, the engine was obviously in. He had the bonnet open. It got a little bit dusty. A little bit dusty, not too bad. So I've dug it out. I've cleaned it up. I've cleaned up all the Vanos unit. Say, polish that. Looking That's a nice. bit nice, isn't it? Give it a bit of a polish. Um, cleaned all the plastics up and what have you. So that looks lovely. Yeah, looks a lot um, better. Got to get an auxiliary belt on it. I've got to turn it over, order some sump bolts and get the sump on properly because that's not on. Right. Um, just give it a check over and get this thing prepped for when the car's done because this is going to be one of the first things that's going in the old. Yep. And it? Don't forget the rear main seal. That ain't on there Rear main either. seal. We could do with that as well. Um, we got that. Yeah, you have got one somewhere. Does that mean we've got the bolts on that somewhere? Yes, probably. Okay. <laughs> Better have a look through that <laughs> there stuff. There is a box upstairs with bits left over from when this was being put together. So right. Probably in that lot. It's a lovely motor though, isn't it? It does look good. It's a beautiful motor, this. It's got yeah. the new performance fuel rail on it, look. Looking all factory. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to getting this thing running in that car, yeah. mate. It's a nice 320 horsepower, or should be. Naturally aspirated. Naturally beautiful. aspirated. Sounds good, six cylinder. A bit more weight than the four, but it'll be all right. Are we really that worried about weight? Not, not actually really. racing it, are we? Not so. racing it, are we? It's going to sound good, isn't it? Yeah. Plenty of torque and that. So, yeah, really looking forward to that. Um, and today, there's a belt on the K-Series. Yes, there is. So, we have started to time this up, mate, and you're having a little lesson. Yep. Looking slightly confused earlier. Wow. But it made more sense today than it normally does for oh, really? some reason. But, yeah. The thing that's confusing about doing this to start with is if you go by the uh the book of words on the auto data yeah they actually time up i think 90 degrees before top dead center on the crank um, and i think the reason for that is is because with the standard vanos system on this um, you've actually got two inlet cams or a cam in two halves um, the first one you've got the vanos system on each side and then um, there's a belt or is it a belt at the back? Yeah, there's a belt at the back. Which so the exhaust cam drives, drives the, other the other inlet half, cam. Yeah. So it so, all times up a bit funky. So the exhaust cam drives this half of the inlet cam. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just weird. Yeah. Very strange. So obviously with the way we're doing it, we've got this Sabre um, blanking kit. So we're not running Vanos, we're just going to run it straight, normal cams. Yeah. Um, got vernier pulleys at the front there. Um, now when we ordered cams for this, we actually got them from newman but newman right. didn't have the cams so they've sent us piper cams oh. so these okay. are piper sort of semi race cams really it's a racing so, profile a bit more than fast road but yeah yeah um, and it's a hydraulic setup so we're not running the solid lifters hydraulic uh, going to be perfectly adequate yeah for what this customer wants 
Um, so basically, we're not going to time this up as the book, mate. We're going to time this up on pretty much timing it up like we do the cozies. Yeah. So we've got 100 and apparently we've got 114 before top dead centre is where the, uh, the exhaust cam times up and 110 on the inlet. Okay. So what we do, just to run through, we, we obviously find true top dead centre on the crank using our usual method with the, our gauge, which is over there, sort of there. Um, that goes down the plug hole. We find true top dead centre. We've got our little pointer there. Um, and then what we do is we do the exhaust cam first, obviously put our belt on, tension it up to the correct tension, where I use the old quarter of a turn trick. Um, make sure everything's done up. Then we turn it through and we do the exhaust cam first. Yep. So it's a case of putting our dial gauge onto the bucket when we've turned it through to nearly, um, or getting towards 114. Right. Um, put a gauge on and then we turn it through exactly the same way as we find top dead centre on the uh, on the crank. We find a little where the centre of the dwell is basically. Um, and I think we were a couple of degrees out on there, weren't we? Yeah, a few degrees out. So your guess at the start sort of was Yeah, good. it was pretty good. So because I was guessing, what I actually did um, was put the crank on top dead centre and I positioned the camshafts with the lobes round about where they look okay or look where, like where they should do say like on the cozies so basically you want the number one inlet to be closed and number four exhaust to be closed but both looking like they're no inlet looking like it's just closed yeah and exhaust looking like it's about to open exactly yeah so you can you can be a tooth out depending on how much movement you've got on these vernier pulleys here what we do is you set them in the middle on zero um, and then put the cams where we want. And when we get round to 114 degrees, you should be um, on proper full lift of the cam in the centre of the dwell. Um, if you're not, if you're out and there isn't enough movement on here, then I'm a two out. We'll have to move the cam, take the belt off, and move the cam round. So we've got the adjustment in, within the vernier. Yeah. But I was fortunately I was okay on there. Yeah. We started to do the inlet. Yeah. Bear in mind the, the inlet is 110 degrees. Uh, after top dead centre, is it, or before? After. Yes, it uh, is, after. Yeah. Um, so we've started to do that. So what we've done is turned it round. So 110 is where we're aiming for, for the centre right. of the dwell on that cam lobe. Um, we've got it round to here, which is uh, 97, something like that. Yeah, about there. And we've set up the dial gauge, or you have, yeah. on top of the bucket there. And it's looking like around about 10 is where it's going to be on the, the top of the dwell and then it's going back. So what we're going to do is turn the crank round and find a position before the top of the dwell. Yeah. Um, just before anywhere, but somewhere that you can just identify. So we'll use 20. Yep. And then we'll see where we are on the crank pointer. Right, so. About there. Are we there? Yeah. Right, so that's in 20 there. Now if we have a look down the on the, the angle, bang on 100. Yeah. Which is good, because that makes it sort of a bit easier to work out. So what you want to do now is keep turning the crank through until it goes up and then back to 20. Okay. All right? Yeah. Where are we? 135. 135. So we were 100 before. What you want to do now is half that. Um, so that is 115, 100 and about, about 117 and a half. -ish. Yeah. So we want to go, but it needs to be 110. So what we do, slacken all these off on the uh, pulley and then you want to move the, the crank back to, uh, so you want to move back about seven and a half degrees, so. Okay. I'll try it, then. mate. Yeah. See where you so, are. So, 
slacken these off. How slack are we talking? Uh, just slacken off so the, the pulley's going to move and the cam's going to sort of stay. So you don't want it like actually loose no, you don't like want that? It, yeah, you want it like actually loose. Oh, you do want it Yeah, you don't want any loose. sort of right. pinch because that will stop the pulley from okay. sliding within itself. All right. Yeah. So if you move that. Back as in anti-clockwise. Yeah, anti-clockwise. If you go back to like about 128, something like that. 128, so to about there. Yeah. Making sure at the same time when you start to move that, that this is this, moving. This go, yeah. That's it. How much did you move there? Back to the 128. So. Yeah. So about. So seven nip and them a half. up now. Yep. Just nip them, that's all you need to do. All right. Now, what you want to do is just move that, uh, move the crank backwards. So this gauge here goes below the 20 again and then come forward to the 20. So you start the process again. All right. Uh, yeah. yeah. So what does it say down on the bottom now? Um, about 96. 96, is it? Yeah. Okay. So now you've got to go forward until it goes back to the 40. It's changed from 40 to 20, from 20 to 40 because the gauge right. has moved. So we've... Let's go. There we go. And that is now on 126. So what was it, 96 before? 96 before. So one, two, three, so it's a hundred, about 111 degrees. Yeah. Pretty good, isn't it? Almost bang on. I'd say that's pretty good. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. Um, so what we'll do now is tighten these three up. And tight. Give it a decent nip. Remove the gauge, turn it all, turn it all through. All the way. A couple of 360s, mate. Make sure it all turns, nothing touches. It feels good. So you feel far. all right? That's all right then. So now I've got number, back to number one, look. The old 180 out. Yeah. So number one. Just about to open. Just about to open the, the inlets. Just close yeah. the exhaust. Yeah. Jobs are good, isn't it? I think so. All right, mate. Yeah. <laughs> Baffled. Baffled. <laughs> Baffled with what you've just you've just done. So that's okay. it, really. It's as simple as that, mate. Yeah. But it's just to be honest, like I said, you it's one of those processes because you don't do it too often. That's the thing. You just got to almost remember and teach yourself again every time you do it. But yeah. There we go. Well done, buddy. This Excuse one's me. almost done, then, isn't it? I think so. Rocker cover on. Sump on. Build out. Um, yeah. Mint. Well done. Well done.